Hello boys and welcome to react any friday where we go over and react to some videos live on my twitch and today we are gonna react to Kenji was betrayed by his quote unquote friends by Mariyume. Yeah, let's, let's jump right into this shiz. The other day Kenji made a tweet talking about how he was doxxed by this person named Dove. And even though this is an event that happened two years ago, the reason why it's being brought back up again is because he was told by his friend Phoenix that Dove was bragging about doxing Kenji and downplaying the severity it was. Kenji posted a screenshot of a DM from Man, this is so cringe, like talking about like the talking about it like this. Man, I don't know, like Dove seems sus. Like I've already watched Kenji's VOD where he went over all the screenshots and it was it was well well like three hours long. And I don't know man, there was a lot of screenshots of them talking shit about him. I don't know, this whole situation was kinda cringe to be honest, I don't know. A hate group that Dove was a part of where they were all talking crap about Kenji and this caused yeah. a massive uproar in the VTubing scene because when it comes to VTubers and their privacy, any information leaking that could be considered an invasion of that VTuber's privacy gets labeled as doxing. Now that might sound odd but there are a lot of people who will just casually dox a VTuber because they simply don't understand the importance of omnuity in VTuber culture and this is what Dove tried saying in her apology. Yeah, there's a lot of VTubers that, that, that go incognito, even some of, the, some of them don't even say their age as well. The document, which before she even wrote that, she first made this tweet here talking about how she understands if no one ends up supporting her anymore after Kenji's call out post and then shortly privated her account because she got a massive influx of hate comments from Kenji's community when he had made his call out post. Yeah, not surprising at all. But after a day, she unprivated her account to leave a formal Twitter apology where she claims how sorry she is and that she didn't realize the sorry. severity of her actions. And now she. The only thing she was sorry for was that, the, that this entire thing was made public. Like, that's what. Yeah, like some with some other individuals that were involved in, in this. Yeah, they feel like they were sorry because it was all made public. She's been doing so much to improve herself as a person and now that she understands the importance to not do things like contacting a content creator's family member and finding their Instagram and posing images of their VTuber's face without consent. Now while people are freaking out over Dove's apology. I'm wondering how did they find, like how did she, she found Kenji's Instagram? Yeah, that, yeah that's kind of a mystery to me. Every member from the Mofongo Boys VTuber group released their own tweets and statements talking about how they were not involved with the doxing, how many of them had no idea that any of this was going on, and I want you to remember this bit of information because it's going to come up again later in this video, because after the Mofongo Boys released their statements, everyone in the VTubing scene started coming out to talk about their experiences with Dove and how they're all cutting ties on her, and this post here by Uba exposes Dove even more by poking holes in her apology document. What really interests me the most about this document was the fact that they had why like so suddenly like people just like uh like jump out of their closets to kind of like talk about drama say if like nakstaku drama if you remember uh with, with with a certain vtuber company that he had problems like it was like two and a half years ago or nearly three years ago um there are like some people that they like jumped out of closets to to expose nux for underpaying his editors like out of nowhere and and, and like that and like that thing was old, so like, I'm not really a big fan of people like like randomly like joining these uh, crusades now that the person is getting cancelled. Yeah, I don't know, it seems kind of weird to me. I had pointed out that Dove was very much aware of what she was doing and that her trying to dox Kenji was in fact because of malicious intent. At first, I didn't understand why Dove had all this information about Kenji, but in Upa's taught document, they revealed the fact that Dove was Kenji's mod who got upset. And there's a lot of screenshots just showing and I think there was like many more screenshots that she didn't show in the video. Said that Kenji unmodded her due to- I mean, Kenji was, sh was showing three hours of of screenshots so i don't think you can uh, slap it in just eight or like nearly nine minute video the conflict within the discord and then out of retaliation dove docs kenji and then went on twitter to spew this abstract web of lies conflicting with everything she said in her own apology document and these claims are backed up with various screenshots of dove's dms with other members one of them being this person named hayate who had made their own expose tweet talking about their experiences with dove and how she tried to manipulate them by framing kenji as this evil manipulator but this 
all came crashing down the moment Kenji made his callout tweet and everyone else on Twitter started coming out about their own experiences with Do. Now, here's the weird thing about this entire situation. I have never even heard of Dove before and I don't remember Kenji calling this yeah, person same. out two years ago. But seeing how... I don't really know Kenji, so I don't know if he did or didn't call out anyone two years ago. Yeah, I don't really watch his content. I've seen only one vote of him and maybe like a couple of clips. But I don't, I don't really know much about the guy. Well connected she was with all of these other creators makes me start to question. Why did all of these big VTubers decide to stay friends with Dove knowing about the situation that had happened with her doxing Kenji? Hi, Future Mario here editing this. Yeah, that's also pretty sus. Yeah, I agree with that. Video and shortly after I ended my live stream, Kenji had apparently been streaming the exact same time and revealed some incredibly disturbing information about this whole situation. Hold on, I'm gonna call Kage. I want to see what his like why the f he was even in these group chats, bro. Oh yeah, go crazy. Bada dong, bada dong. Yo, yo, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, bro. Question: Why, mm -hmm. why is Maki sending me screenshots of you and Dove and all these other people talking sh behind the scenes? All right, plotting to cancel well, me. Nah, yeah, I did. I again, plotting to cancel him. Absolutely horrendous. Um, I really wanted to like, you know, I did. Why want did it take you so you long like to to cut off Dove? Oh, yeah. So about cutting off Dove. After that, I realized my actions of what what I did, right? And I wanted to better myself and. I left. I ain't trying to hear that shit. After this public <laughs> expose on Kenji's Bruh. live stream, Rikami had to end his stream in tears. Kenji is so based. I don't, I don't really know much about it, but he seems pretty based from what I've seen. Expressing how he didn't know about any of this and how heartbroken he was to find out about everything that had happened. In fact, he released his own video the other day to give his thoughts about the entire situation. Meanwhile, it's unclear where Phoenix is going to be heading after all of this, but he did release a statement because Kenji calling him out for fence sitting on his live stream is, well, something that he's going to have to live with for the rest of his life if he wants to come back into VTubing. Dove released a very long statement announcing her departure from VTubing and looking at the ratio between the bookmarks versus the likes, I think we can all agree that this was to be expected after all of this. But what took me by surprise was seeing Kage canceling himself by removing all of his YouTube videos. Percent valid for his feelings. I I don't. He was crying. What the frick? I don't. He, he, I mean, it's so weird. Like, why did he remove all of his videos? Is he also like like uh, like graduating or something? I don't know. I don't want you to forgive me. I really don't. I feel like I deserve this. Privating his Twitter account and going radio silent because he very well could have kept posting videos on YouTube. Man, why is it always the people that you expect least to get into drama like this? Like Kage was my boy. And also wait, uh, let's take a look at... He had 90k followers. Now he has, now he has 93.5k followers. He lost 6,500 followers in just a week because of this drama and well and it wasn't just like on twitter people went out of the, went out of their way to search up kage on twitch outside of twitter slash x although most people call it twitter not x and and they just unfollowed him man it's crazy he's getting uh, like i guess like mini cancelled i don't know how to call this yeah but yeah but he lost quite a bit of followers in just this this last week YouTube and drama. nobody would really pay that much attention to him because not everyone on YouTube is aware of the situation and he already had a pretty established fan base on there. But I think it's safe to say that the Mofongo boys are done and all of the other participants yeah, of that done. hate group DM have severely damaged- This thing single-handedly disbanded Mofongo boys, man, that's so crazy. Damaged ...their reputation because of the screenshots that were shown and we all now know the terrible things that they were saying and planning of canceling Kenji and how long this has been going on. And then to put the cherry on top, they also got kicked out of Ofkai, which makes sense because the convention is trying to maintain their reputation oh, really? since a lot of the yeah, Hololive girls are attending there. Makes sense. Wait, wait. Uh, Rikami. Oh, all of them? Okay, I see. Because the convention is trying to maintain their reputation since a lot of the Hololive girls are attending there. And anyone that could potentially ruin that is obviously going to be removed without hesitation. This is a terrible situation that had occurred. And regardless of how problematic some of these people think 
that Kenji is because there were a lot of people on Twitter. Is he problematic? I mean, I already said that I don't really know much about him, so I don't know. I can't really comment on that. Saying Kenji deserved to get doxxed, which is a very crazy twist because nobody deserves to get doxxed. Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's a, like such a weird thing to say that someone deserves to get uh, cancelled. Uh, I mean, dox, not cancelled. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I don't, I don't really see eye to eye to that thing. And well, hopefully Kenji and everyone else involved have finally learned the severity of the situation and how revealing any little or big personal details about the person behind the VTuber avatar without consent is considered doxing. And that in itself is very dangerous information to be spreading around. But you know. I think there's an even more difficult reality that a lot of us are starting to come to terms with out of this entire situation because Kenji hosting one of the biggest callouts in a live stream and damaging the reputation of a big VTuber group isn't even the scariest thing to learn about this entire situation. The scariest thing is that hate groups and these targeted doxing and cancellations have been happening and have existed in the VTubing community for a very long time. But this is the yeah, biggest one scary. that's been exposed due to how famous all these VTubers were. I'm sure you can imagine how this can look on a much smaller scale where even more petty callouts and hate mobs occur because they're not always happening on Twitter. A lot of content creators do very nasty things behind the scenes in order to take out their competition. And this entire situation has made a lot of other VTubers voice their fears on wanting to get closer to any other VTubers. And while I agree that people should be careful about who they spend their time with, that doesn't mean that you should be skeptical and in fear of every person you talk to because there are a lot of good people here in the VTubing scene. Just finding them is the most difficult part. I think the biggest lesson that we can learn from what happened to Kenji is if you're the type of person who is constantly being surprised from all these cancellations and exposés on people that you're friends with and then you find out that they turn out to be terrible people, then you need to do a better job at paying attention to what your friends are doing. No yeah, it seems kind of scary though, this entire like, uh, like who is your friend and who isn't in the VTuber community. Thing. You need to like constantly watch what they're doing on social media, but you need to do a better job at scouting people. And if you know they're doing something terrible, then you need to start holding your friends to be more accountable. Or, you know, just flat out filtering them when you start to notice some red flags. Because the problem is that we give a lot of power to people who have given us many red flags and showed signs of malicious intent, but we choose to ignore it. Or maybe we're just not aware of what a red flag is because in these friend groups, a lot of us want to fit in. And then there's this peer pressure yeah, to true. participate in these unsavory activities because if you don't, then you're going to get booted out of that click and then it's suddenly a you versus them situation. But how can you tell the difference between you overthinking something versus an actual red flag? Well, um, how about we talk about that more in this video here? Okay, let's look at the comments. I feel horrible for Kenji, the fact that he had to live with stress for two years. Oh, it is true, he had to live for two years. I kind of forgot about that. But I'm glad he's feeling better. Now, I'm feeling sorry for Rikami, who was part of the, who was part of that group and had no idea ab about his friends and what they knew who they really are. Mostly Kage, this entire situation is horrible. I feel so bad for Kenji, no one deserves to be doxxed. Yeah. Yeah, th yeah, that's why I don't really see eye to eye to the thing where she said that s that some people wish to get get people cancelled or doxxed, was it? Yeah, I don't really see eye to eye uh, to that. I couldn't imagine going through this. I hope Kenji sues Dove. Sorry, but this is so funny, the full grown man blacking out his profile picture and making it say, I'm sorry, yeah, it was Kage. Anyway, that was the end of the reaction. I hope you enjoyed this and until next time, see ya later. As you know, V2。Yo, what up boys and welcome to React Andy Friday, where we go over and react to some videos all uh where we go and react where we go and react to some videos over on my life. Where okay, oh my god, okay, let's say it again.
Yo, what up boys and welcome to React Andy Friday where we go over and react to some videos live over on my Twitch. Today we are going to react to this VTuber Scamden Artist by Static Tokyo. As you know, VTubers need artists. Without them, we wouldn't exist. But uh, it's baffling that we have VTubers out here scamming artists out of hundreds, damn near a thousand doubloons. What? We gonna yeah. I've seen a bunch of these guys' videos, he seems pretty funny. I mean, he makes some like really short videos, which I guess props to him for not making 30 minute videos, dragging out everything. Talk about it. Static Tokyo Sun Bye. So basically, this VTuber by the name of Nalithia. Nalithia. I yeah, I don't know this VTuber. I probably fucked that up. We're, we're just gonna say Nali for short. Okay. There's a lot of VTubers in the community, man. Did a multiple chargeback against Laura, an artist that did emotes for Nolly. The first chargeback was for $676. Nolly claimed that the emotes were damaged and unusable. What? Damaged and unusable? Is, like, what does that even mean? Which I mean, they weren't. It was even still on Nolly's channel after the chargeback was done, but was later removed off her Twitch once people caught on that she was still using them. They're beating your ass in the quote retweet. Yeah, I got a feeling sorry for something after they, they, they get called out, like in the previous video that I made. Laura then goes on to say that- I mean, mate, uh, the previous video I reacted to, I mean. Nolly would ask for multiple changes that she didn't pay for, but Laura was cool and was trying her best to fix them to Nolly's liking. Of course, when the final project was delivered, Nolly had some corrections she forgot about. Laura said that she refuses to just keep redoing this comb without conversation, and that's when Nolly started to crash the fuck out. Nolly then claimed that Laura was lazy and she didn't even deliver the commission. It doesn't even end there. Nolly spun back and did another chargeback because she another is unable to use the provided yeah. artworks and the seller no longer wished to have contact with her. Are you fucking dumb? You're probably asking. Huh? <laughs> this guy is so funny. Why did Nolly charge back twice? Uh, that's because three invoices were made. One of them being edits of the invoice. Wait, 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 that's, uh, that's because three invoices were made. Let's actually go through these. One invoice included. Get Discord stickers from the first emos that I did uh, did for her between 2021 2022. Since she had been returning client and I offered not only the stickers, but the OG size emote without adding extra fee, one out of two, and it was one. Additionally, she wanted edits, <clears throat> she wanted edits outfit for the emotes commission on, on 2023, the set with the shrimp, plus layer separation for wave emote. This makes for 17 emote slash stickers, invoice two included 10, em 10 emote designs, 10 stickers, and three layer separation, but I'm such a reader. Invoice free requ uh, requested after I sent the sketches for two more layer separation plus the sketch a new emote invoice two and three included eleven emos and stickers. One of them being edits of the emos that were done back in twenty twenty three. The Wait, ed edits. Do they look any different? How are they broken? Like these emotes look pretty good. Like I don't, I don't really see a, see any problem with these emotes. The second being 10 stickers and three layer separations. And the third was sent because Laura finished sketches for two more layer separations, plus a new emo. I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> Nolly decided to just release the emotes uh, out for free to her community for any to use, which is usually not the ethical move there uh, at all. Nolly's mod then said, usually not the ethical move there uh, at all. Unless they bought the commercial rights, but since they did a charge box, that wouldn't matter. XD. Nolly's mod then said, Pe People still use XD. He would know. beat the shit out. I would give half my life salary to have her in front of me and beat the shit out of her. What the fuck? Laura and called her a scammer? Are you fucking dumb? Someone called them out on it. Are so it's Nolly dumb? somewhat defends the statement. Well, ain't no fucking way, boy. Out on it, so it's not least somewhat defends the. Why should the gender matter nowadays? We have gender, we, we have so many gender fluids. People, what's what's gender fluid? What the freak? I've never heard that before. 
people literally don't care anymore about who has between their legs. Like for example, if Titanic would have sung today, I doubt they, I doubt they would say a woman and children first to the safety boats, bruh. Because all of the all of that equality, etc. Well, ain't no fucking way. Yeah, it's it's Respectfully, eat this red. Just to add, Nolly also went on a TikTok. Make sure that you're tapping the screen. There's 11,000 people in here. To then try and disprove the claims being made. To try to show that her PayPal account only has money going out and none going in. The thing is, PayPal wouldn't show a chargeback in the transaction history. It will be under operation disputes. I literally don't understand why some people would do a PayPal chargeback on a product that has been proven to work. And you've the also cheese. been caught Nigga. using said product. <laughs> And then now you're just putting an artist in the red. As all Yeah, that's kind of weird, to be honest. Always, please don't go hate on anyone mentioned in this quick little video. Hell, Nolly already got dropped by Mythic Talent. Oh, rightfully so. Uh, so if any- Yeah, this guy's pretty good at making short videos. Anything, go show love to Laura. Don't be surprised if I have new emos done by them in the future. But I digress. We go end the video here. Short and sweet. Not even gonna do an outro. We just gonna end it here. Peace. All right, let's look for the comments. They just be dude. Artists put so much effort and time into their art. Yeah, that's true. Scamming an artist for absolutely no reason is ridiculous. Hope she gets what she deserves. Oh my God, she did not pull the gender card. So I wonder why artists are often depressed and easy to anger. Yeah, I mean it. I guess it's hard to be an, an online artist in 2024 because there are so many artists and the, the, like the demand is uh is actually bigger than the supply. Or is it the other way around? I don't fucking know. Make sure that the tapping the screen is crazy. My morals no. I don't only get the recommendation when the stream is over. The stream is over. Alright, thank you for watching the reaction. I appreciate it, gamers. And until next time, see ya later. Like I said in the last video, the VTuber community. Yo, what up, boys? And welcome to React Any Friday, where we go over and react to some videos live all over. Yo, what up, boys? Yo, what up, boys? And welcome to another React Any Friday, where we go over and react to some videos live on my Twitch. Today we are going to react to issues with VTubers by Static Tokyo once again. Like I said in the last video, the VTuber community is in a sad state. To all the DGENs, Wolf Awu. Is it really in a sad state? I don't know, I'm probably uh, saying this because I live in my own little bubble where I just watch indie VTubers. I don't really watch any uh, corporate. Corpus. Yeah, oh, bark, shine. bark, snarl. To all the gooners. I'm coming. Yeah, your mouth. Your mouth. So much so that VTubers yeah. literally hate the community. But what happened? I don't know. Uh, why is Static Tokyo here? It's probably due to a lot of shit, to be honest. And there's also a lot of drama in the VTuber community as well. A lot of petty drama, like we had just reacted to yesterday. Uh, questionable people. Questionable fan base. Hell, having the base of VTubing itself coming from anime and idols fan bases probably wasn't a good choice. No disrespect. Get off my dick. Plus, we kind of shifted a little bit out of that as the time passes on. Of course, there's toxicity in every community, but uh, yeah, true. Especially in like the like the elitist part of the communities, like music, anime, manga, yeah, gaming, yeah, all of that like uh, toxicity and elitists and yeah, they can get annoying quite a bit over time we keep seeing some trends start to pop up crazy that drive some people away but let's start off from the beginning what the review to boom and fandoms they are based on yeah i don't really know a whole lot about vtubing before the big boom in 2020 to be honest the eiffel tower whoa German. Picture this, it's 2016, you're a Japanese nigga chillin', and you see this. Your anime and idol loving brain gets tingling, your spider senses kick in, and you've been awakened. Now emphasis on anime and idol. 
because if you haven't noticed those are the two words that had subtitles okay these are the two primary fandoms vtubing stems from and also shares the same similarities in terms of toxicity and positivity there are a few other fandoms we can touch on but yeah i'm not really a fan of idol culture at all because i mean i already said, said before that i watch uh, indie vtubers that that almost have nothing to do with the word uh, with the word idol yeah there are just people that they just happen to use vtubers i guess i guess i've watched like v shoujo as well but whatever but uh i don't want any of that smoke of course vtubing kind of takes the aesthetic and art style of anime probably due to the fact it's originated in japan duh are you fucking dumb this goes duh. from vtuber design to lore videos to trailers even things like music videos at times but that more so comes from like vocaloid shit and obviously with these forms of expression this is gonna have the end like i said in the last video the no, vtuber I community is in oh a sad God, state an accident. to all the dj she came about which is the year hollow life more so comes from like vocal okay, back. shit and obviously with these forms of expression this is gonna have the anime niggas turn heads and personally that's cool i mean vtubers are able to connect with their fans in a unique way well for the fans it's like they're interacting with an anime Streaming for VTubers wasn't exactly commonplace at all yet. Uh, Kizuna Ai did YouTube videos, hence Tuber in the name. Kizuna Ai first stream didn't happen until 2017, a year after she came about, which is the year really? Hololive debuted their first talent. And shortly after, this kind of introduced the whole idol aspect. At least from what I gathered when I was researching the timeline of things. Hololive, Sora, and Kizuna Ai started releasing music around the exact same time as well at least from the research i gathered i could get the specific date wrong and low key i can't really comment on this because i don't really know about kizuna i this shit slapped people liked it however with both the anime and idol fandoms doing a fusion dance <laughs> there is a few issues bruh now here's the thing when you make stuff and put it out for the, the public, public, there's a chance niggas will see it. I got the heart I read. Oh. I can get rid of the oh, blush too. Your... Which I mean, no shit. But that in a way could be a little dangerous. Some idol fans are crazy enough to find niggas to the reflection of their eyeballs. I beg your pardon? I'm not even joking. No they will go to stabbing way. niggas, stalking niggas. Hell, one of them had the gall the gumption to go on stage and try and take an idol off rip. Are you fucking dumb? Now, when VTubing started popping off Are in 2020, getting bigger and bigger, uh, Niji Sanji's mm -hmm. popping, Hollow Life is popping, uh, B Sojo just became a thing, and even some indies were hopping on it. The appeal of VTubing is being able to be anonymous, represent yourself in a different way, and even help those that may have debilitating health conditions to do something they love without being judged. But, uh, Sometimes it feels like niggas forget that you're a person. And even more so if you play into K-Fob. Basically, you put on a show or an acting character. It's usually um, more prominent in wrestling. And hell, I think the term even came from wrestling. You'll see that type of thing happen more with corporate VTubers. But some indies will do it as well. You can literally be someone's waifu or husbando. Or someone's idol. To some of those fans, you're just a character. Akin to an actual anime character. The main difference being that fans can actually reach you in a way. These streamers can read your name, actually address you, interact, or like a post on Twitter, etc. Yeah, true. And this is where people start getting a little weird. You weird, buddy. And she can hit the fan real quick if you. Yeah, I think the parasocial stuff is is worse with uh, with, with streamers than with actual idols because, I mean you, uh, I mean if if you're watching a live show of idols, they they just like. I guess like 10 of them or 10 or so of them and there's like a huge stage of people and then like the interaction just isn't there and with live streams uh, and parasocial stuff kind of being like more like intertwined together yeah, I guess it gets kind of worse as well Break a fan's fantasy God forbid you were in a relationship Now obviously this isn't everyone we were kind of talking extremes but it is coming Yeah but it's more about like the big I guess the bigger ones where this kind of matters or not matters, where people get parasocial with. I'm in a place where some people think just because they watch every video or every stream or that they donate, that they have the right to be your friend, which isn't true. Don't get me wrong, yeah, every streamer is Andes. extremely thankful that you enjoy the content enough to pop in every time and even donate. True. But remember, they are a person with their own personal lives. They aren't just VTubers 24-7. Another thing people don't realize, 
It's the instigating. Goofies with a chest. Nah, really, y'all some instigating ass niggas. We see this most often with agency VTuber fans trying to pin two VTubers or two groups against each other. Or fans attacking those yeah, that will weird. rightfully criticize an agency. Yeah, the whole, like, <laughs> Genji, bro. Uh, the whole, uh, like, Shalala drama, or, or, or would you call it drama? I don't know, was kind of also, was also kind of silly. Or people that simply yeah, just don't, don't like the VTuber content rise. Once again, I know this isn't everyone, but if you're one of these parasocial over-obsessed creeps, STOP BEING WEIRD, NIGGA! I'm racist. It's time to actually talk about the title of the video. What? What, what, what did she, she say it like that? VTubers are weird! No, but seriously though. Was that Bao? Some VTubers understand that fans can get parasocial and weird. They also know that's where the money flows in. Yeah. And... And like one thing that's kind of funny to me is that uh, sometimes like some people would go into VTuber chat and they would say something like, "Hey, you look good today," but if, even though they have they have a VTuber model and they look look the same as always, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I don't know why why people would say that in in chat like, "Oh, you look good today." Yeah, no shit, I'm a VTuber. I look all this, <laughs> I, look, I look this way yesterday as well. Obviously, some do it satirically, but others are completely dead ass. Would you like to meet me? And perhaps you enjoy me? You're not a different breed. You just different. You're weird. <laughs> Encouraging parasocial behavior, in my opinion, is weird. <laughs> and this is done in two primary ways. The actively encouraging it way that I showed previously, or even just staying quiet. And if you're a corpo VTuber, you usually have to stay silent. And sometimes even lie about things like being in a relationship. Another parallel from Idol Fandoms, by the way. Indie VTubers have more freedom to speak up about certain things and stuff they don't like. Yeah, I guess that's why I watch indie VTubers over Corpa VTubers. They have like, so much more freedom to say shit, shit, that, shit that they want to say. I mean, before getting cancelled, of course. But Corpo VTubers kinda has to follow the fans' delusions in a way. But that's enough about VTubers to fans' interactions. VTubers to other VTubers are very... Vey, I'll suck your cock if you watch a clip of Shia Lily, what the fuck? Very cutthroat, surprisingly. You wanna settle for less? Go ahead. For no reason! Yeah, Some VTubers make content insane. about drama in a way that does way more- I mean, although, though, it, it happened already, already like two years ago, so I don't think anybody uh, cares about that anymore. Harm than good. <laughs> we call these niggas drama tubers. I already- I've never heard- like anyone saying that we're drama tubers. You hear the comments. But static, aren't you a- Get off my dick! There's a big difference between putting an oil to the flame and just talking about it. Drama tubers add fire to it and just makes things bigger than they should. We have VTubers that would actively scam artists out of hundred of doubloons. Even in the corpo VTuber sphere, there is bullying amongst talents. Some VTubers are just clicky as hell, which is fine. We see a lot of VTubers that tend to collab a lot because they are close friends. But they don't treat people outside the friend group like shit. Like some VTubers I heard of. And if you want my honest opinion, I think some VTubers are just a little too sensitive and attention hungry. A lot of the issues I see within the community is due to someone's feelings getting hurt, and instead of talking like an adult, many of them immediately go to- Yeah, it feels like in high school sometimes, internet I mean, in general, yeah, not just VTubing. Twitter, on some needy streamer overload type shit. And just like fans, VTubers can also be parasocial with other- What the fuck is this? This fucking VTubers and get their feelings hurt in the process. Just because y'all collab a few times, don't make y'all friends. Just because y'all called a couple times, don't make y'all friends. You can be cool with someone and not be their friend. And sometimes, VTubing itself can also feel like a big clout chase. I want to kill other people. Which is fine at some points. Okay. If niggas didn't fight or manipulate each other over it, I've experienced this. I bet you they've experienced this. And you wonder why a lot of VTubers are getting more and more cautious to collab with new people. Some VTubers may even go as far as to using VTubering as a way to, uh, get some booba, uh, to dumb it down. To the extent that they do crim- Yeah, a lot of VTubers have a lot of big booba. Even though I'm not really a fan, I guess. I don't really care about booba that much. Sometimes they- Like, they can get oversized as well. Criminal activities like, uh, sexual harassment. Oh my god! Hey, future what? VTubers and, and current ones. Sexual harassment. Maybe, like, you know, don't do that. No. 
trying to get weak. I'm trying to get weak. VTubers and the community is weird. It was built up already toxic communities where fans. I mean, there's a lot of like weirder things that. Uh, I mean, weirder things than VTubers online. Construe their fantasies with realities. <laughs> Not only that, VTubers somewhat play into these fantasies, whether satirically or deadass. The VTuber scene is also seeming to get more and more cutthroat in terms of cloud chasing, boundaries in terms of what is a friendship or just purely business, drama tubers speculating on certain situations that only make things worse, people wanting to call out others without reaching out to the other person first over something that could have been dealt with in private. But the community isn't all bad. There are a lot of cool content creators within the space that simply want to do just that. Have a good time and create you. content. And you know, chase a bag while you're doing it. You know, you gotta get that yeah, money. money. And that's it. You know the drill. <laughs> if you want my videos early, become a member and or patron. Subscribe because a lot of people don't. And hit the notification bell because I do stream here on YouTube. And okay, let's look, look for some of the comments. He bought to cook five star full cross over this one. I'm here for it. Yeah, th yeah, this guy is pretty funny. He, he he doesn't even have 10k subscribers. I thought he would have had more. Thank you for running a uh, clip of me. The fact that people can separate real person behind a skin from fictional VTuber characters definitely doesn't help. It also doesn't help that VTubers encourage highly parasocial behavior from viewers. I mean, most people that I, that I watch, they don't really indulge in parasocial behavior. That's just one way ticket to shit show. I've also been in large Discord server of, of pretty popular VTuber I used to watch. Uh, when things went down in real time, so that's the big reason why I'll never have my, one of my own. It would be booming during the during the pandemic when people were stuck inside and didn't socialize in person for a long time. Certainly didn't help either. Parasocial skills are definitely skewed for some because of that and I don't think uh man I'm such a reader and I don't think things have improved a lot on the front there's also a lot of contributing points I could yep yeah, both for long but yeah yeah parasocial endies can get kind of crazy sometimes then I thought we are friends because we collapsed a few times I'm dropping dog on Twitter now yeah, anyway, thank you for watching this reaction and until next time, see ya later. Now, I do have to make an announcement before this. Yo, what up boys, and welcome to React Andy Friday, where we go over and react to over... Yo, what up boys, and welcome to React Andy Friday, where we go over and react to some videos live on my Twitch. Today we are going to react to the new iPhone is here. I don't really use iPhone. I'm, I've always been an Andro uh, Android guy. Yeah, I don't really know what's up with Android. I mean, uh, iOS system. I've never used it, so I can't really comment which is better. But I just use, you know, Android. I've I've had for my entire life, pretty much. Now I do have to make an announcement. Yeah, so let's just let's jump right into this shiz. Announcement before this video. Yes, I did shave uh, my face and I absolutely butchered it. There are multiple uh, gunshot wounds around my face, and if you look hard enough, it probably looks like connect the dots. But I want to ignore that for a minute. Man, it feels so weird to to to, to watch a flash tuber person, because I've for the past while I've been only watching VTubers, so it's kind of feel, it feels kind of trippy to watch a normal person, normal human being on the screen and it because i'm here today to talk about the new piece of revolutionary technology that you might not have heard about so one thing i've noticed is smartphones yeah i definitely have never heard about it so yeah you're right dominate everything they, they, they can do whatever you want you can call someone text someone play flappy birds i'm pretty sure there's more uses to a phone but that's all i can think of but now we have a yeah, watching sussy video new piece of technology that is meant to trump phones <laughs> or maybe at least be a companion piece to a phone and that is the humane ai pin yeah i definitely have never heard about this one I know about like smartwatch, but I don't know about this thing. Now, essentially, if any of the ads you've watched are to be believed, it's... Although I don't think it can really, really replace a phone. I think it's already good as it is. Like you don't need to, to reinvent the wheel.
basically a little pin, a little square, and you, and you put it, you put it on your chest, and it's basically going to be Under your new phone. AI assistant. You know the thing that pretty much like every single phone has now, like iPhone has Siri, uh, Samsung has. <laughs> I don't know, Samsung S, I, I, I don't know the AI's name, but a lot of phones do already have an inbuilt AI, but this is meant to be an exclusive actual physical AI that you can interact with. So the main goal of the AI pin is to simplify people's day-to-day -day life with the quote itself saying, standalone device and software platform. It even comes in three pretty colors. Look at these colors. That's amazing. <laughs> platform. It even comes what? in three pretty colors. This looks the same, what do you mean? Eclipse and Equinox. It looks almost the same. Although I guess this part is silver over here. It's more shiny, I guess. This costs seven hundred dollars, eight hundred. Then it's quite a bit. Look at these colors. That's amazing. <laughs> I want to buy one now. It's also got a. Yeah, that, yeah that's that's more expensive than more than most phones, to be honest. Battery booster, which bucks. apparently uses wireless charging to keep it charged on the go. And because it's an interactive pin, you can use your voice. You can touch it on your on your chest. Just show show off to everyone how big your chest is. Catch me up. Yanir asked if you want to get hookfish with Sam this week. And one thing that's really cool about the Humane pin is lasers. Buzz Lightyear's little arm laser, they finally implemented it. So you might remember, yeah. I, I don't know if this is like a, a false memory I've got in I, my head, but I remember like... I should probably stop saying brides, it's getting kind of annoying. Over, you know, nine, ten years ago on YouTube, there'd be these videos of like the latest iPhone that didn't even come out yet. And it was basically just like a hologram that you, you typed on that didn't even exist. The AI pin actually does... What, what, what is it? I've never heard about this. Let's go back a little bit. I've never heard about this. I've never seen this either. Yeah, yeah it seems kind of trippy though. Exist. The AI pin actually does that now, but with, you know, varying degrees of success. Got my clock, weather, the date. If I tilt my hand up, got nearby. It can also, of course, play music, but that's only through the uh, Tidal program. And most importantly, like Siri did pretty much like seven years ago, you can use voice to interact with it. Again, with a varying degree of success. You can do a lot with this thing. You can send text messages, you can take photos, you can take videos. It's meant to be everything a phone is, but not a phone. Oh, yeah, so it's pretty much a smartwatch, but on your chest instead of on your wrist. And by the way, it's $700. And on top of that as well, once you pay the $700, you then have to pay $25 a month subscription fee what? just to be able to keep using most of its features. I man, it, man, that's such a scam. 25 bucks a month. That's more than most streaming services a month. Don't know about you guys, but I absolutely despise subscription models. I think they are the worst thing to ever be invented. Like, for example, Netflix. Okay, I'm going to sound really out of touch right now. I'm going to sound like a boomer. I would rather pay like five grand to Netflix up front and to be able to use it for a lifetime as opposed to paying, you know, like, like $20, $30 a month. That's mostly because unless you're really frugal with your money and you keep tabs on like every single mm. subscription service that you have, eventually you're going to forget that you've got one on and it's going to be slowly draining money out your bank account like, like every single month but obviously that's the reason why subscription models especially in media are so popular because they yeah, it's a fair argument but i don't know about that chief they kind of do want you to forget that you're still paying for something because that's extra money they're getting in their pocket and you're still seen as a number on their database if everyone gave netflix this like magical 5k that let's say i'm going to be generous enough and and give to everyone because i'm such a nice person eventually netflix are going to hit a ceiling and that's one of the reasons why they turned on the whole you know no password sharing you have to all be in the same household because they actually saw a loss in growth because as big as a company could be there are only so many humans on the planet to consume it now the humane ai pin is created of course by two ex apple employees yeah the thing about uh, netflix not sharing passwords anymore so, so we have to be in the same household it's kind of sad to be honest yeah what, what, what did i say like that you are now one of my elite employees i mean are we really surprised that it came from apple i i feel like anything that is too evil to be used by apple they just run away and start their own company now yeah, i've never used any apple product i mean i already said it before 
the two founders were Imram Chowdhury and Stephanie Bongiorno. Now, Chowdhury was actually in the Apple game for quite a long time, even helping design some of the, you know, first earliest iPods, then going all the way up to the iPhone, which is pretty surprising because one thing you'll notice that most people that work at a company, they don't really stay there for that long if it's in the tech business. Like, for example, I remember before Elon took over Twitter, it was so hard to get like a contact on Twitter to help get your account reinstated or to, you know, get a post removed, mostly because a lot of people yeah, I don't really know about this stuff personally. That worked at Twitter, they only worked there for a short amount of time to get their foot in the door so they could usually do a startup or work for another company. And Imram is actually the guy who designed the home grid layout on pretty much all iPhones. So when you open your iPhone and you go, ah, oh, funny, funny, I like, I like the squares. That's basically thanks to Imram. Now, Stephanie's role was a little bit different. She was basically a director for software engineering. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is because, you know, these weren't the people that cleaned up at the end of the day when everyone at Apple went home. These are two people that are very respected in the company and, you know, even including trends into their work that are still used today in Apple. So surely because of that, the AI pin, their own startup company, Humane, has to be flawless. Correct is a relative term. When I asked it for the time we'd get closest to totality in New York City, its answer was off by over an hour. So why is the AI pin getting so much hate? I mean, it's basically an iPhone. But you can't call anyone and they're charging as much as an iPhone. But again, why the hate, guys? Why is there so much negativity in the world right now? Now, obviously, that $700 price tag is... Ooh, it's very hard to try to justify. Yeah, it's very expensive. Plus, it's like... um. Like a bonus, like like paying seven hundred for like a bonus technology. Plus, you also have to pay twenty five bucks a month. Yeah, this, yeah, yeah, that seems way too expensive. Buy that, especially because what you're basically. I don't think I would ever buy this thing, even though, even if I was rich. To be honest, I'm guessing is a phone light. You, you, you're not getting an actual iPhone. You're, you're getting something that does less than an iPhone, but it's charging pretty much the same amount of money. On top of that as well, the so-called AI assistant, obviously it doesn't run. Yeah, plus you can get a, I guess like a decent phone for 500 bucks. This thing costs 700 bucks plus 25 a month. Yeah lie on anything it is like its own search engine and because of that it is incredibly limited on what it can find i have seen so many videos online of people like asking the ai pin to book something to organize something to explain something and it doesn't know how to and it basically just defaults to like a, a random google search give me a list of things to do in italy for a comprehensive list of things to do in italy it's best to consult travel guides, tourism Pizza. websites. So pretty much, it just told me to Google it. Well, on top of that as well, there is a built-in camera in the AI pin. <laughs> told me to Google it. Oh, man. And, and I'll be honest, like, the camera in the AI pin, it actually looks okay. It looks like a, a phone camera you'd see on, like, a more, you know, economy-costing phone. But for something so small, I really don't mind that. I think that that's good. The problem is, it's not the camera that looks good. It's the fact that the sensor inside the camera is not able to read anything. So there was one video I saw, for example, of a guy showing a bridge to his AI pin, his little buddy, and he's like, what's that bridge? And it got the bridge wrong by like, I, I don't know, five states. Look at this and tell me what bridge I'm looking at. The bridge in the picture is the one I built in Minecraft with your mom. That's definitely <laughs> the Brooklyn Bridge, right? And because it's AI powered, they overlooked the most basic things. Do you want to... In set a timer? Can't do that. Unlucky. Want to set an alarm to get up early in the morning? Can't do that. Unlucky. It can tell the time though, which if you just pull up your phone and, and check, that could probably do the same. Yeah, or we can just get like a normal ass watch instead. Thing. So then you really start to realize that every... If you want to tell the time to just get a, get a normal ass watch instead, like you don't, like you don't need any like... Uh, like super technology. Feature it has, a phone can do better, or a phone actually has, and the yeah, AI pin doesn't. $700, by the way. $20 a month, by the way. Now, let me think of some examples of things the AI pin can do that iPhones can't. Okay, uh, let me think. Uh, scanning something in front of you to tell you what it is, even though it might be wrong. Uh, you could do that, but also you could do that with Google Lens on your phone. Look and tell me what this is. It's or a I'll just look this, I guess. Ah, it's a Cybertruck. Photo is of a Cybertruck. 
Yep. And as we know as well, one thing that saves phones and stops them, you know, being dated as soon as you buy them is third party apps. Third party apps to give you things that, you know, the phone itself doesn't provide. Better fitness apps, uh, temperature. You, you can check the temperature apparently with some of the apps as well. And also, like I said, uh, yeah, again, yeah, like you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Like phones don't really need to be replaced with anything. Plus, the, the, there's so many like, like things you can do on a phone. Earlier, Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird is very, very important. If any of you have a phone on you right now that still has Flappy Bird installed, please send to my PO box. Thank you so much. Now, thankfully, Humane did partner up with a song company to, you know, have the ability to play music. It's not Spotify. It's not even SoundCloud. It's, it's not even Deezer. You know Deezer? I have no idea who uses Deezer. Yeah, I, I, these nuts. Yeah, I don't know Deezer. I've never heard of, uh, about this. Deezer, it comes... Yeah, I personally use Spotify. So whenever I look up an artist on Google, I'm like, what the fuck is that? No, it's Tidal. What, what is Tidal? I have no idea. I'm assuming it's... Yeah, I have no idea either. Basically Spotify, but at home. Like, I'd be honest, I would even take YouTube music over Tidal. One thing that really kills this AI pin... Is YouTube music any good? I don't know. I've no, I don't have a YouTube premium personally, so I can't really comment on that. On YouTube music apart from everything is the fact that they've chose to partner with really bizarre companies like Google for example can't do that can't read your Gmail buying something online adding something to your calendar you can't do that you really are just wearing this little like cobblestone block on your shirt which makes you look like really really stupid by the way and it does nothing now you're probably thinking stupid, surely I can synchronize it to my iPhone right like, like everything can be connected to my phone like for example the amazing Juicero machine you remember that right that amazing machine that would uh, I don't I've never heard of it was this pump out the, 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 this god giving liquid that you could drink and it tasted so good and you definitely definitely needed that big bulky machine to squeeze the juice out and you couldn't just do it yourself and that's definitely not the reason why the company went under no 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 well the thing is even just it do it yourself and that. that's definitely not the reason why the company went under no 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 no, no. Squeezed out, widely mocked star press juicer is shutting down. The company which offered pre-sold packets of diced fruits and vegetables that uses plugged in in its $400 machine launched only 16 months ago. I don't know, man, what is even is. I've never heard about this. No. Well, the thing is, even Juicero could be connected to your phone. This can't be connected to your phone. They, they've chose this really weird model to kind of justify the $20 a month. Yeah, why? That's so weird. Month, which is basically the AI pin is given its own phone number. And included in this service charge of $20 a month is obviously cloud storage, which, yep, yeah, that's pretty much mandatory with everything now. But the cell plan that they have with the phone number is domestic, and it's basically unlimited calls, unlimited texts within your country. Now, obviously, the way this was advertised, it wasn't just like a, a bit of cobblestone that goes on your chest. The biggest pull for you to buy it is the projector. It, it's so cool. Look, it, it projects onto your hand and then you can access all the things and you, and you can swipe on it. That's so cool. It's really pointless, really unneeded, but it's, it looks cool. It's basically the equivalent of buying the first thing you see in the Fortnite item shop or flexing that you've got like an OG. This avatar in Fortnite, I didn't even know. Like how many characters are in Fortnite, like... Uh... Like we have Attack on Titan in Fortnite, My Hero Academia in Fortnite. What is this? John Wick. Are we looking at John Wick? I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if John Wick was in Fortnite. I mean, you got Naruto in Fortnite as well. Now, now Avatar: The Last Airbender you have in Fortnite. There are so many characters in Fortnite, man. I mean, I I've never really played played Fortnite. I'm not really a big fan of the building, whatever. G skin. You stand out. I'm a more of an Apex guy myself. Therefore, you're a cool boy. Now, obviously, we have phone screens now that are 1K, 2K, 4K, 4 bit, 2 bit, 1 bit. <laughs> Probably 8K somewhere. I don't know. Maybe I'm one of those like oversized gaming brick phones that people use. But this is a 720p display and it is monocolors. Meaning there is only one singular color. You also navigate with like hand gestures, but like half the time the sensor doesn't even read it properly. So it just doesn't even seem to work. The way it works with the swiping and the gesturing as well it is so obtuse. It's like you need to kind of, you know, pull your hand back to go deeper into folders or swipe side to side. But if you just get a phone and then you just press like, you know, any kind of of app that is much more satisfying than this little like projector on your arm now if you've heard of the ai pin you have probably heard of the famous world famous tech youtuber marquez brownlee yeah, i've heard about him i never really watched any of his videos or like much of his videos yeah i don't really uh, watch technology stuff you do i could for more react andy we could react 
to Marcus Brownlee. Not to be confused with how Will Smith pronounced him in YouTube Rewind, Marcus Brownlee. Uh, yeah, I definitely did not pronounce it like that. And Marquez Brownlee. Now, Marquez does some great tech reviews. I've seen a lot of tech YouTubers, and it's always such a rat race to cover the latest phone or the latest update. But now, I do have to make an announcement. No, I pressed the thing again. What am I doing? It saves you so much. Now, you can't do that. You really are just wearing this little like, just do it yourself, and that's definitely not unlimited calls and limited texts within your country now obviously the way this was advertised it wasn't just like a, a bit of cobblestone that goes on your chest the biggest pull for you to buy it is the project with the swiping and the gesturing as well it, it's yeah, so, and it's always such a rat race to cover the latest phone okay. or the latest update but marquez does add a very distinguished angle he's a, he's a distinguished gentleman it's usually just him sat there speaking pretty candidly about a product and whether he likes it what he doesn't like about it and usually comparing it to products that you might have, which is a great way to, you know, see if it's something that's worth your time. Now, he did a review video on the AI pin, and it was titled The Worst Tech I've Ever Reviewed for Now, basically saying it is the single worst piece of technology he's ever reviewed. Now, it, it is a little bit clickbait, because I thought he was really going to go in on this product, saying how it is the worst thing ever. He still says it is a bad product, it is not worth your time. But, you know, I expected him to just, just destroy that product, but, yeah. you know, he was pretty just formal about it. It's like, it's not really that great of a product. But obviously, as YouTubers, you know, to get an income, we do need to sensationalize everything, mostly because as well, when you're talking about a topic, you're going to have 20 other Andes also trying to cover the same topic. So you need to... Yeah, that's true. It's kind of like the video that I watched on a podcast where the demand is uh, bigger than the actual people that you can interview on a podcast. The same thing can go with like technology stuff as well, where you have like... like like very little technology, but there are so many like YouTubers that, uh, what's the word? There are so many like YouTubers that, that, that can cover it stand out. So, I mean, it's clickbaiting, but like, it's just natural to kind of survive on the platform now. Now, there are a lot of tech reviewers on YouTube, but I think it is safe to say that Marquez is the biggest by far. He has tens of millions of subscribers, but he basically became the head for hit piece, like kind of articles, basically saying that it's his fault that the company is now like losing sales or it might be going under because of- What? I don't think, the... I don't think that, 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 that a single video can really uh, do that. Even though the, the video has like nearly 1 million views. His video that was like overly negative. So what I want to do is kind of just go over the points that Marquez actually made. For example, one of the points he makes talking about the materials, it's aluminum, which makes it feel pretty premium. But obviously aluminum isn't exactly the lightest metal, so it feels pretty heavy. And also keep in mind that when you're wearing this thing, there's always two batteries powering it the entire time. So it just feels like a very heavy lapel mm. pin that's also a bit warm. Now he also goes into the same points that I talked about, like the interface being like really un unwieldy. Searching takes forever. So apparently the way it works is it has a bunch of like pre-saved information like on the actual device itself. But if it doesn't have any of that pre-information saved, it will then do like a general web search, which takes, you know, anywhere from like one to like 10 seconds. One thing Marquez brings up in his review, which I liked is AI hallucinations that the lapel pin, the little AI pin will actually be that broken that it, it basically has its own form of schizophrenia. Now, even though he says it's what? the worst product he's reviewed of all time in the actual title of the video, he still extends like an olive branch. He is actually pretty sympathetic towards the company. And he does say he doesn't think this is the end. And he's actually interested to see where it will go next or what the company Humane will develop next. Yeah, I'm personally not interested into this product. Yeah, I don't know why I would really buy this for 700 bucks and 25 a month. Yeah, sorry, bro. He basically makes the point saying he would love to see a product like this boasting these features in 10 years from now. But now, currently, the technology just isn't there. I don't know whether you guys remember that ancient meme. I think it was something like, born too late to explore the Earth, born too early to explore space, but born just in time to buy a shitty lapel pin for 700 yeah, That's pretty funny meme. I like it. $100 plus $20 a month subscription. One very good point he actually brought up and he actually really sympathizes with the company in his review. It's prioritizing ease of use before innovation. They wanted it to look cool and feel cool on top of actually adding something to the, you know, the, the tech ecosystem. <laughs> yeah, also, I guess it might be like a bit faster to like check smartwatch or this, uh, this AI pin than like whipping out your phone out of your pocket. Plus, plus also it's, I guess, small, but I don't know, I'm um, like, you don't, 
like as I said before, you, do, you, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, like you don't need to replace phones, I guess. Me when I pay $20 a month for a lapel pin that doesn't work. <laughs> now, obviously, when Marquez <laughs> uploaded his video, the reception was very good. But then, as what always happens, Twitter found out about it and Twitter was not very happy. Now, there was this like weird little cabal of... I guess Twitter isn't really happy with a lot of things, but... You're like Twitter startup and stock bros that like, you know, kind of looked at the lapel pin and they thought, that's a great idea. That's genius. I'm going to buy that right now. And then when they saw Marquez's video, they were like, no, uh, lapel pin bros. How do we get out of this one? So obviously they started God defending it on Twitter, basically saying that Marquez just did like an entire hit piece on, on this lapel pin for views. Now to be devil's advocate, obviously when Marquez and his team were uploading the video, they probably thought this is going to do really well because people just love dunking on tech products. But at the same time, it's good that he did this video it was needed obviously he's fulfilling his own needs you know he's getting money to pay his team he knows he's gonna have a banger on his hands but the point i'm trying to make is it's good that he made this video to basically warn people how like bad this product is it is gimmicky you do not need yeah i mean if the product is bad then like it's not really about the video that makes it um like not sellable I mean, if it's just, just a shit product, people are going to realize this and just not buy it. This product, if you have a smart... And also, also like uh, technology reviews, although I don't really watch any phone which is like most people like, like in the developed world at the minute you, you you do not need this pin it is completely pointless so those people you see going down the street on those like happy wheel segways like, like you don't need that now what most of the copers did to kind of like back up their claims is they referred to a yeah technically we don't need smartwatch either a previous review that Mark has made. I mean, we don't need, but we can have. It's like the thing that you don't really, even if you don't really need the technology, you can still have it, like for fun, I guess the company Fisker. Now, Fisker released like an EV model vehicle and Marquez did a review on that. And in that review, he gave some pretty like strong but fair criticism about, you know, why the product doesn't really work. I don't think I've started this car one time and not gotten some error on this screen behind me. This has failed on me many, many times. I'll get a video of it just because it happens so often. It's easy to get a video. And I've also had the driver assistance systems fail on me several times. The list goes on and on. And then that then called yeah, Mar yeah, Marky seems to be pretty well spoken. Yeah, he seems like a cool guy. Was the stock value of Fisker to absolutely plummet. So I feel like there's a bit of a revenge plot here, a little bit of a Game of Thrones episode where the stock bros are basically blaming Marquez for, you know, basically the public in general discovering that a product is bad. But that being said, it might not actually be the case. Marquez's video might have not actually started that whole trend because if you look at Fisker's share price, it was already in freefall months and months prior to Marquez actually uploading his review. But obviously, that's not going to stop the copers. Now, I've been using the argument that Marquez, like so many YouTubers, they will make a review video on something they know is bad, going into it, knowing that it's bad for the sake of, you know, warning the public, but also to get views. That's fair. That is not the cope they're using. The cope that they're using is like yeah. Marquez is being paid on the side to do like these kind of like hit piece attacks on other companies <laughs> to raise stocks in like rival companies. At the end of the day, what people need to understand is review. Yeah, it seems, seems like a weird conspiracy theory, if you ask me. Reviews are for everyone. Can some reviews be dishonest? Yeah, absolutely. Like, like if you have some kind of agenda or narrative going into something, you might already... Yeah, game reviews seem to be kind of off sometimes. You have a preconception that this is going to be the best thing ever, or this is going to be the worst thing ever. I know brave statements only on this channel, and also taking into effect that YouTubers, they want to make a livelihood. Like, obviously, on the main channel, completely different ball game. But, you know, like when I review a game, I'll probably look up online and see that it was pretty bad or pretty good. And that will give me a little bit of bias going into it. But then I'm able to actually formulate my own opinions. Yeah, I feel like most of the times, uh, like a lot of reviews on like games or anime are pretty accurate. I mean, not all the time, but let's say if something has like 30%, you know that that that, that like mostly it's, it's, it's not going to be that good or it's going to be average at best, even if you don't really align mostly with reviews. And that's exactly what Marquez has done. And I think I think public can be pretty accurate, at least for my opinions, like if if there's a game that that's on like 50% that 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 has 50% positive review, reviews i know that i'm probably not going to like it
think it's really good that we still have people making critical reviews online because I have seen like the past year or maybe even two years, there has been such an influx of like these, these bad actor advertisers. Like when I'm scrolling on YouTube shorts or on TikTok, I'll see, you know, someone talk about, for example, uh, Huel, right? You know, Huel, the, the meal replacement shake. And they'll be like, what I is don't. Huel? And they'll act like it's them giving an honest review on like how the product works. And, and I'm actually interested because I think, okay, you know, I, this might be something I want to look into. Maybe I want to lose a bit of weight. Maybe I want to put on a bit of muscle. Uh, but let me see what this product looks like. And then you actually watch it and you kind of realize it's less of a review and more of a shill. And then you look at the, the, the very bottom corner and you'll see those two, those two little letters, A, D, add. And then instantly like, like the smile drops off my face. I lose all interest and I keep scrolling. But it's getting harder and harder to notice these ads now because I think we're so pre-programmed to seeing sponsored shill content. We instantly scroll past. As soon as you see that little, little ad, that's why they do that, by the way. They have to leak. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, I don't really like watching ads. They tell you that it is a sponsor. They make it as small as possible. It's like when you're taking like medication or something, or you see like an advert for like online gambling on TV. You've got this huge list at the bottom of the screen showing how it can completely fuck up and ruin your life. But it's so small, I, I need to look very close to read it. And because of that, uh -huh. sponsors have got very crafty, almost like paying people. Yeah, we really need to be like Detective Conan to find this people to do these kind of like shill reviews but i'm happy that people like marquez are still able to do like you know good honest reviews it's a little bit sensationalized but who cares we we, we yeah, good for him, I guess. YouTubers at the end of the day. I do find it really funny that they're using the cope that the review is sensational because, you know, Marquez is someone that has started his channel and the only reason he's still doing YouTube today is the trust he's built up with his audience. You know, I, I've seen like old videos of Marquez where like he's got like the iPhone minus one camera, like, like it looks like complete ass and he's just sat in his bedroom doing, doing like a tech review of something. So after watching this video, the question is, is the $700 AI lapel pin with two batteries that warms up your little chest and also has a cool little projector and also costs $25 a month to access the cloud to make calls and texts. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Why? What do you? I'm going to go outside and buy one right now. Yeah, I'm not buying this. Yeah, like 700 bucks plus 25. Or, or was it 20? I'm pretty sure at, uh, at the beginning of the video, he said $25, but now he said 20. <clears throat> okay, the, the video has 7 million views now. I guess it's pretty big. Okay, let's, lo let's look through some of the comments. Four globes in 25 parsecs. Confirm no editing to alpha, to gen alpha editing. What's gen alpha editing? Looks like Pyro finally gave food to the editors in his basement. Shave anything but his hair, whatever. And so many comments about editor or his hair, what the frick. Anyway, thank you for watching this react and the video and until next time, see ya later. Yo, what a boss, and welcome to another React. Yo, what a boss, and welcome to React Andy Friday, where we go over and react to some videos live on my Twitch. Today, we are gonna react to Iron Mouse Doesn't Deserve This by Ref Says Desu. Today, we're gonna be talking about a very bizarre situation involving the Shoujo's Iron Mouse, who has been the subject of an ongoing harassment campaign for several months now. And to discover what's going on here, we have to take a and this whole thing was kind of weird, like, I don't know, like, let's... ...trip to TikTok, which honestly gives Twitter a run for its money in the brain rot competition, because there's some truly obnoxious stuff going on over at TikTok. And a quick story as to how I just... Yeah, I don't really go on TikTok, I don't use it at all. ...discovered all this stuff going on with Iron Mouse. Basically, my wife likes to watch TikToks with me on her phone. Basically, she downloads TikTok on her phone. She gets the Chinese spyware and I get to laugh at Zoom or cringe. It's an even trade, right? But her feed is mostly normie stuff on that account. So when we saw Iron Mouse pop up, it was like, whoa, there's a, a fellow VTuber. What's going on here? Why is she on the feed? And we click on the video. It's a completely harmless video about anime or something. And the replies are crazy. Like 90% of the replies 
are hateful and attacking her and you have to does it really uh like compete with twitter or brain rot i don't know i'm not sure about that one chief although i don't really go on tiktok as i said before so i don't really read the comments to think to yourself like who hates iron mouse not only is she one of the most successful vtubers and streamers in the world she is one of the most well liked okay she is not problematic in any sort of a way if you have beef with iron mouse you have issues okay? yeah mostly she's fine like i don't have problems with, with her either i watch her stream sometimes from time to time okay like there's nobody is trying to gun uh, go after iron mouse okay she's very well liked so i had to do some looking around on her account to understand what is going on here and why does almost every video from the past dozen or so have a lot of hate comments well it seems like it all began right here with this TikTok and the surrounding story where iron mouse won content creator of the year here are your nominees for content creator of oh. the year. it was pretty poggers moment for her although like i would never expect that that this would start the hate of her here it's not gonna be me iron guys mouse. stop people make games quackity let's go Scream, and Cypher PK. is gonna win. And the game award goes to Quackity. Iron Mouse. Iron Mouse. What? So Iron Mouse couldn't be here tonight because Iron Mouse is animated, and sadly we're not in the Matrix yet. But she did send us a message. Take it away, Iron Mouse. I am so incredibly honored to have been the. I think she didn't even know, like, uh, when, like, when they told her to make the video. She, she had no idea that that it was because she was picked. She thought that, uh, like everyone was supposed to make a video. Of the content creator of the year award. First and foremost, I want to express my deepest heartfelt gratitude to the incredible community that has gathered around my streams, and I also want to extend a very special thanks to Vishojo, who brings all my ideas what to life. Frick? Thank you so much oh my for my God. team that helps me every Guys, single they made day. Me and thank you so much everybody for the video video I still can't no. believe this is all happening. Thank you again, everybody. Oh my God. So if you're familiar with how other platforms like Twitter reacted to Iron Mouse winning this award, you're perhaps not too surprised that the comment section on this TikTok was brigaded by a bunch of people hating on her, including a lot of people. Yeah, first comment saying, who are you with 1300 likes? I like be at least like slightly respect what is pretend like you're a normal person from the communities of the other streamers on that nominee list. So they're angry at her. They're saying things like, you know, this is rigged. How did Cypher PK not win? It's one of the top comments. One of the other top comments saying, who are you? Everyone here to see who Iron Mouse is. Bro did not deserve this. I'm sorry. Who are you? And comments like that. And of course, Every comments like, who are you? It's very narcissistic. These people on TikTok are like, surely if I, random TikTok user number, number 10,000, have not heard of you, then clearly you are not very important or successful. In yeah, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's such a weird mentality. Yeah, I don't really get it. Any sort of a way. I mean, like, personally, I look at the nominee list and there was multiple names of people I had never heard of. But I'm self-aware enough to know that the internet is a big place and just because i haven't heard of someone doesn't mean that they're irrelevant clearly if they're on that list they're very successful Rev is based and a lot of people watch them so i can recognize that while also not knowing every single person on that list however these people are so angry at iron mouse they're acting like she's a literal who when she's one of the biggest not only vtubers but streamers in the entire world now unfortunately tiktok has this sort of trend with users where if one video is getting hate, pay, people basically navigate over to other videos to spread more hate messages because it's very easy to navigate on TikTok from video to video. So it's not too unexpected that the previous video right here that was made before the Game Award announcement would get brigaded by haters. So you see like this is over Cypher PK. How did Cypher lose to this? I fail to comprehend how this wins best content creator. How did he win? And stuff like that. How did this win content creator of the year? No way you she. won this and so on and so forth. And you can even see in the videos that followed, you would get more con uh, more comments like this. KCO was the real winner uh, down here. What is that thing, by the way? And, and so on and so forth, asking who she is again. So you think like, okay, well, that happened back in December. Man, it's so weird that, that like, people can get so, like, so hung up on just a, just a streamer award.
December. That's when the Game Awards were. December of 2023. Clearly, yeah, it's going to die out. Like, people can't care that much. Nope, not really. You continue on here. This is another one that she released. This is over a month after the uh, Game Awards, where the comments are still super negative. What is it doing? This one? This really beat Casey on Jinxie and Kai for Streamer of the Year? And you can see... All this time passes and people are still mad. You can see threats like this. Keep yourself safe. And it's so whack. Which is... You know what? I think I take it back. Uh, TikTok really uh, competes with Twitter with the brain rot. A subtle, not so subtle, way of telling people to game end themselves. And then you have comments like this. Count your days, little bro. All these... But how has little bro became like a universal insult? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It sounds so cringe. Man. People fuming, and you think clearly it won't continue. Oh, little bro. <laughs> yeah, shut up. Continue beyond January and February. It's several months. You go to this video. This is from March 22nd. Around four months since the creator, the uh, Game Awards, and you can still see comments. Post on Instagram, please. Post this on Instagram Reels. Down here, some more people saying that over and over again. Uh, post on Instagram, little bro. Post this on Instagram Reels. So the reason people are saying this is because if you post things on Instagram Reels, their rules when it comes to bullying and harassment are much looser than places like TikTok. So they're telling her to do that. So Instagram is pretty much looser in general. Like you have like borderline women undressing themselves, being in bikini pictures and stuff like that. And not just just like a like a normal bikini pictures when they are on a beach, like. Like it can, can get pretty explicit. So yeah, Instagram can get also pretty whack. So yeah, I, I mean like, how did they like figure out to, 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 uh, to like, um, how did they figure out to send things like that on their TikTok? I, I, I don't know, it's so weird. Like they all like, like anonymously agreed to, to ask her to go on Instagram. So basically they can take her off platform to bully her more. Now, I think that's not only unhinged and weird to hate on someone like this for yeah. literally no reason other than just like jealousy, I guess. But also it shows how... They're not even like the, the streamers in the picture. Yeah, it's like, like the fans of streamers, like they are, like it's them. Really pathetic these people are, right? They're trying to act hard on TikTok, but they're afraid of losing their account. Like they won't even say it with their chest. They're afraid of losing their TikTok account. They're absolutely pathetic people. And it's really crazy that they feel like they're so entitled to hate on this creator that they want this person to go into their own arena. They want her to go off platform so they can properly bully her without facing the consequences like having your precious TikTok account get suspended. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, this entire thing is really strange, I guess. But of course, that is not the only hate that she has received. In fact, other large content creator communities have brigaded her in the past simply for succeeding like she did at the Game Awards. So go back right here. We see this TikTok she posted randomly talking about Diablo, right? Where it's from uh, June 30th of 2023. And you can see all these comments saying this. We all came here from the Kai video, right? This is the number one streamer. And then more references to the Kai video and people's basically saying, uh, you know, Kai. So hey, I remember this cool, man, like, uh, don't start to be with her, bitch. Somehow sent them over here and this person saying this is who gets number one subs on Twitch. Well, that is what these people came for. So basically during the summer of 2023, Iron Mouse was the most subscribed to Twitch user on the platform. And she had over 170,000 subs. And Kai, who was previously the top the most sub to person on Twitch would react to this, but here's the clip that everyone's referring to. Second in subs? Who me? Wait, who got more subs than me? Who got more subs than me, chat? You're lying. You're lying. You're actually lying. You're lying. Yeah, I haven't seen a single stream of Kai. Yeah, sorry, gamers. I'm a fake Twitch, Twitch watcher. You need to search Prometheus Flamethrower Gangy. Let Davis try taking that. From what I remember, like, Kai was actually positive bro, about this. But I know who Iron Man out is, but is she doing a subathon for 30 days, my nigga? She gotta be! Oh, 
she is. Day 27 on some shit. Oh, W's, W's, W's. Yeah, yo. You also w's. It says W's. W's, that's nice. That's so, like, like, how did they come from this video when he's being, like, like very positive about this? Nice, that's nice. So yes, at the beginning of the clip, he's kind of playing into the who type joke, which honestly, maybe he yeah. doesn't know who Iron Mouse is. Like I said, it's a big world. A lot of content creators out there. Sometimes people just aren't aware of each other. Yeah, I don't really know a lot of big streamers personally. Yeah, it was just like, I guess, average size in VTubers. Yeah, that's the, that, that's the most people that I watch. Other. But you can see, even at the very least, at the end of the video, he's showing some respect to her and congratulating her and encouraging her. But these people take that as somehow sending them off to go send hate to her on TikTok of all places. That is Edno Crusade, bro. And these people feel like they were somehow uh, emboldened to go do this when that was not the message that he was sending. And, you know, this is one of those situations I see people raise the argument all the time of, you know, basically a, a content creator is responsible for what their community does. And I think that's a load of bullshit, right? Especially with larger content creators, there's no way you can control the actions of so many people. But what I the Iron Mouse doesn't really deserve this, this much hate. I will say is when you see all these comments for months on end, especially in the name of other content creators are harassing Iron Mouse, it makes their communities look bad. Like if you're a VTuber or even an anime fan, why would you want to join these communities? It looks like you're going to get hate just for your hobbies. And these people are like literal like 12 year olds. They're acting like a bunch of spoiled brats who are angry about a VTuber succeeding that doesn't affect them personally in any sort of a way, except it makes them mad Ooh. because this VTuber is winning awards or getting more subs than their favorite streamer. And that got them so upset they're going on multiple platforms to hate and doing this over the course of many, many months as we have. Yeah, it's weird that, that this thing is, is taking so long, this hate, this crusade against Iron Mouse. I've seen, but people, and it's really crazy that they it's feel like, like they're getting again. more subs than their favorite streamer. And that got them so upset, they're going on multiple platforms to hate and doing this. So I'm pressing you know, things on accident. Over the course of many, many months, as we have seen. But that's gonna do it for this video. I mean, if you wanna drop by and, and leave nice comments on these videos, I encourage you to. If you have TikTok, like you can see, I don't have TikTok personally. I don't even have an account, but. Yeah, I have an account, but it's because I'm posting uh, stuff on it, even though it's not really getting any views. I kind of stopped doing it, doing it because it, well, because my stuff doesn't get any views. I have an, uh, I have an account. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's just a very sad situation. It's a reminder that no matter how mainstream you have account for content, that's what I mean. You might think VTubing like for my content is it really isn't, you know, the, the normie side of all this stuff, they still hate VTubers very ignorantly and they still act like they did many years ago when VTubers were first being introduced into the West. But I was actually pretty skeptical in 2020 about VTubers. I wasn't really a big fan, but I but I, in time, I I VTuber fight, and I'm a VTuber myself right now. That's uh, unfortunate for places like TikTok and many other platforms, by the way. But that's gonna do it for today. Yeah, Lord Aethelstan converted me into VTubering. This video, I appreciate you guys listening. As always, feel free to share your thoughts about today's topics in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and I'll see you next time. Yeah, Raph is pretty based. Okay, let's go through the comments. The hater because she's successful, not because she did something to offend someone. Yeah, that's true. Classic internet brain rot. Yeah, she did. She did, did like didn't do anything crazy, and like most of the time she's pretty chill. Like she doesn't do anything weird or unhinged. Or I guess she is like unhinged in her own way, but like not in a cancelable way or anything. I almost was the other content creator I knew on this list. Copium Bros. Yeah, same. I, uh, yeah, I don't watch. Uh, I never really used to watch Twitch all that much, so I watch only like VTubers right now. I mean, it's ironic that a woman was severe. Yeah, I don't think they. This is point. I really like Aroma's statement about this. Did she talk about it? I don't know. Uh, Rev didn't didn't show it in the video. She basically snorted at them and said that she survived. That she has survived a million times harder than anything she can do. So do better, based Mosey. Who are you? Seems like the self-nomination for a terminal online Olympics.
Yeah. Yeah, like uh, like asking who are you and also calling somebody li- someone a little bro feels kind of weird. Like, I don't know how, like, calling someone a little bro became this, like, universal insult on the internet. Yeah, same with race. Like, I don't understand how race got so big. Even though that's, like, the most, um, like, unattractive word when it comes to, you know, like, the meaning, like, the actual meaning. If you have beef with Iron Mouse, then you have issues. Perhaps most people on the platform have issues. Yeah, kinda. Anyway, thank you for watching this reaction and until next time, see ya later. Wait, I need to take a piss break. Bathroom break. I'm back guys okay let's go let's jump into just another intro <clears throat> yo what up boys and welcome to react any friday where we go over and react to some videos live on my twitch today we are going to react to this vtuber was cancelled for stealing a design by mariume once again we've already reacted to her, to her before so let's do it again you guys realize this but have you noticed there's been a lot of scams going on in the vtubing scene all the time mm. do you think it's weird how often we're seeing it because i know art scams have always been kind of like a thing especially with streamers with like the, the yeah i don't really know about this i'm interested robots like hey i can make your logo or whatever but don't you think it's kind of weird that in vtubing it happens daily yeah well what about <laughs> what really daily about when people uh not just scam other people but they straight up just steal someone else's ip yeah <laughs> I was like, I know exactly where this is going. Oh. Yeah, I saw, I, saw, I saw a little bit of this. Yeah, this, this is... This was um, wild to me, yeah. okay? I've never heard about this before. I've never heard about the VTuber in question. Um, I'm not going to name any names. I'll just kind of like talk about this in a general sense. Um, Why is it so quiet? 
There was... I will. His name's Mike. Is that really his name? <laughs> no. Oh. It's, it's, a, it's a reference. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, there is okay, basically there is somebody who's very new to like VTubing and this is something that I see happen all the time is like newcomers come in who want to get into VTubing and they don't really understand like how VTuber IPs work or how art IP works or just mm. copyright or just, you know, straight up taking things without permission. There was somebody who had legitimately commissioned another artist saying that this was like their model and this is like the model that they want and they announced their new brand new live 2D model and it turned <laughs> out that they stole the design from an another artist that hmm, interesting I've, I've never seen this before where they would like base off of concept i think that my concept is very original like i don't want to toot my own horn horn here uh i don't want to toot my own horn here yeah that's what i want to say but yeah, i think my concept design is pretty all right like it was an original OC that they just took and was like, yeah, this is mine now. I want to I mean OC stands for original character. So you just said original, original character. Be this VTuber. Turn this into a VTuber for me. And then <laughs> um, people, people like, I, I just, I cannot believe that so many artists got together to get this account taken down. This account's no longer existed, but basically they stole another artist. Oh, really? Yeah, Ripabozo. OC made it into a VTuber and then got canceled. And it's interesting because there was a huge debate about like not crediting the original artist or even reaching out yeah. to the artist to ask for permission to turn their art into a VTuber model. I know we have things like what we got like a Sonic VTuber, we got a t Tony the Tiger, we got we got like actual IPs, right? But this yes, is a little bit but, different. Yeah, yeah. Those are run by those IP holders. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Which is why those exist this was not the case and it's just interesting because yeah i didn't know about the sonic vtuber or the tony the tiger vtuber yeah although i would rather create an original instead of you know like copying someone else's homework i've noticed it's common that a lot of new people who just don't under yeah mario Mess seems to be pretty knowledgeable about a lot of like ins and outs of the vtuber community like there's a lot of stuff that i don't really know personally understand how v to me or the culture behind this like you can't just take someone else's yeah. oc and not expect to get caught no exactly i don't know why and nave i don't know if you find this as well i don't know why it's vtubing specifically that seems to be like i have no concept of what copyright is i don't give a f what an yeah. nda is like i don't care about any of that like it's it's so weird the amount of like because like i've seen other streamers and content creators be like y'all are wild like, yeah so <laughs> it's I, I, strange. I, to be fair um gosh, I, I guess it's because like when is it really like just the vtuber community i'm thinking if there's like any other community that, that's like this but i don't really think so yeah I guess they are right. And, yeah, the whole idea of content creation even like started and began. Everybody that had like jumped into it at that time, it mm -hmm. got to slowly like ease in, right? Because like there were a lot of laws and stuff like being regulated back yeah. then. Now we don't really hear about that stuff because everybody sort of kind of figured it out. Man, this guy got got, uh, got a such a deep voice, even though he has a he has like a fanboyish model. Yeah, I like the contrast. Uh, then VTubers, I think, um, for them, they're like, I just want to have fun. They don't realize that the fun comes with a lot of, like, expectations that, um, you, you know, I, I guess a lot of legal issues that you should, you know, expect. <laughs> that, yeah. And you're, you know, supposed to take care of that on your own. You know what's it's crazy? Like... I remember, like, four years ago when I first started getting into, like, art and stuff for VTubing. I remember I had somebody who was willing to pay me money to make them a live 2D model of a Genshin Impact character. And I, like, told them straight up, I'm like, not only will you get sued, but I would get sued. Yeah. No, I am not doing that for yeah. you. No. And they go... Why would you, like, copy your characters? Like, like, like sure, you can take inspirations, like, um... I know that that Megalodon VTuber, uh, I mean, like, uh, I know that Megalodon design is pretty much based off of Genshin, you know, kind of like Genshin inspired. And I think Shalala's model is also maybe inspired by some of the design. Yeah, but I mean, like, like st stealing an entire character just seems way too off, man. Like, like even I wouldn't do it. And I'm kind of a bozo. They got mad. They're like, I don't understand what the big issue is. I'm like, do you not understand the copyright on that? Mihoyo huh. will literally take us down and everything. Like, they don't mess around. You can't do that. You you just can't. Yeah. Like I remember. You can steal an entire like character and put it as 
as your VTuber and, and then pretend like nothing's happened. For that era heavy of VTubing like in the beginning where people were like, I want to VTube as Hatsune Miku. And they like ripped the the 3D models like out of Project Diva and like streamed as it. And I'm like, I'm surprised Sega doesn't sue you out of a like into oblivion, dude. Oh yeah. my God. Or like people who are like, I'm going to stream as literally a Pikachu. I'm a Pikachu. Pikachu. That is my branding, right? Like, if is there an actual Pikachu YouTuber or is that, or is that a meme? Even, even people who I, like, adore, right, have, have done that, where they, like, started off as, like, another person's IP. And I'm like, no! Don't it's, do that. It, this is where it gets messy, yeah. though, because if you're not making... Is, it, is that Mari from... My dress up darling. Money and it's like fan made. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Then it's weird it's thing. Weird because like it's a nebulous place. It is. It is because yeah. at the end of the day, some companies take their IPs really seriously, and an artist is no different, right? Just because yeah. like an artist isn't a company doesn't mean you can just take their OC. And this yeah. is where it gets a little mm -hmm. weird because I see a lot of VTubers who will like heavily inspire from like other VTuber designs, and I see that getting into a lot of controversy as well because there there is yes. a line though right there is a line between like sharing the same color palette or having the same style of bangs because yes i've seen vtubers lose their mind over something like that versus straight up just stealing someone's oc i've seen situations where people claimed that having stars in their hair was like like that, you ripped me off because of that like i'm like that's it, it's it's stars wild. in their like, hair the way people will, mean? like claim these little things that are innocuous as like their own thing Mm -hmm. right? I, it's yeah. very goofy. I will say, I think the, the thing that makes the original situation that we were talking about worse is that, first of all, I don't remember, chat, do we know what language the Japanese. artist speaks? Japanese. So not even the same language at all, right? And so there's already a, like a language barrier there. <laughs> the, the artist literally shared that they were willing to work with this person and be like, hey, like, can you just like maybe change this thing about it? Or like, can you maybe like do like, they were willing to like play ball with this VTuber and as they're trying to explain to people what happened. So it's like, this super sucks. But thankfully people were like, oh, okay. Like, because you know, the modern internet has like, you know, like Google translate, Twitter no, translates exactly. tweets for you, right? So it's a little, little bit easier. But, but the VTuber like doubled down instead of just being like, oh, I am so sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let me change that. The VTuber like doubled down and acted like a twat and then they deactivated. Yep. And they tried so. to like raise yeah, kind of weird to go off like this. Money, and the, yeah. it's the fact that they didn't even bother crediting and either. Oof. Like, this is the thing that I guess gets under my skin. It's the fact that this artist was Japanese and this person thought, oh, because they're Japanese, no one will find out because clearly, like, they don't speak the same language. And you have to understand... That's not how the internet works. VTubing no. <laughs> is heavily tied into Japanese culture. Literally, yeah. I was gonna say, like, that'd be like saying, like, I sold my idea for an anime series from this Japanese anime series. No one will yeah. ever be able to tell. It's like, dude, you are very aware, right? That like this scene is so heavily connected to Japan. It's so weird. It's okay to inspire. People have like inspired my designs in the past and like, that's fine. It's also- Yeah, definitely like, like inspirations can exist. Like you, I don't think as an artist, you can go for like inspirations, I guess. Yeah, th th there's a lot of inspire, but not, but like not like uh, ripping off the, an entire model art or character. Yeah. The, I think there's a difference between inspiration and, and ripping off, like, completely. Also okay to, like, reference other materials, too. However, always make sure you're accrediting people. Like, listen, if you're gonna be referencing something from somebody else, just give them credit. It, it's not really that hard to do. It takes two seconds, and you're less likely to get sh on because let's be honest here for anyone who's new to the vtubing scene and you want to get into this be aware that there are people who will meticulously pick apart your art just to yep. see if you traced it or heavily reference it anywhere else they will literally yep. search endlessly every yep. single yep. time you post a photo of your model online just to see if it matches someone else yeah also I, i'll say i'll say this um i would never ever ever take any inspiration from any source ever you guys like lord of the rings <laughs> <laughs> it's okay I've man, it's been so long since since I watched a lot of the rings. It might have been at least like a decade ago, 
I definitely haven't seen it ever since the second Hobbit came out. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Can it take inspiration? And I think I've rewatched the Hob uh, Hobbit, like, I guess, semi-recently, like a few years ago. Yeah, I rewatched Hobbit, but I never, I never rewatched Lord of the Rings. From other things, <laughs> just make sure you credit stuff properly. That's what I mean. Because well, when people are like, is your name a reference to... Yes. <laughs> Yes, it is the name that Frodo uses when he's going incognitus. Mm -hmm. That's where it's from. Yeah. So I, I kind of want to add on to my story, if that's okay. Yeah, I don't really know this VTuber, so I can't really comment, I guess. Okay. Absolutely, go for it, yeah. Because there's something else. I mean, my name is Simon, and I'm a cat, so I'm like Simon the Cat, like that's my name. Yeah, very original. So that happened, that's a very similar vein of this. So you know how yeah. I said like this is, was like a very bad thing. What about if someone copies like a pose? A pose? It's a po yeah, I feel like Jojo every pose. VTuber has its typical a pose, right? So like you can't really okay. copy poses. So something else happened last night that I woke up to this morning. That's oh no, <laughs> oh god, I haven't heard about this. So I heard about this. I haven't. There was an emote where this emote is um. It's the it's a very lewd email where you're looking down on someone and your massive booba is like up in your face. So that's mm. a pose. And there was a big okay. artist who had called out another artist for making a your character here theme, which uh, has a similar pose. Two different art styles, and the poses are actually slightly different too. But the fact is that this big artist called out the smaller artist, and it did not go well for the bigger artist because you cannot own a pose because that pose is actually a meme from early 2000s. Is it, it really? Is. Actually, yes, it is. I. I've never seen this post before, so I don't know. I'm a bit confused on that they one. They found the original source of where it came from. You went to the source. You dove deep into the sauce. Nope, I just had to look at Twitter. No. Someone posted it for me. Oh, okay, fair me. enough. <laughs> never mind. Here, I'll actually show you guys so you know exactly what meme it is that I'm talking about. It you don't have to ask me twice to stare at Booba. <laughs> don't worry, Mari. Oh, this? Yes. That, no, that's such oh. a common... That's, yeah, that's like, actually very common. Yes. That's a very common meme. I was very disappointed because I followed this artist for a long time and I was like, are you really upset over like, like a pose? And it, it's it's really weird because the, the whole VTubing stealing the OC thing, that's one thing, but you don't own a pose. And like, it's weird because this artist, apparently the big artist that called out the small artist was caught tracing old emotes. Oh, and someone dug shit. that up. Oh, shit. That's crazy. And the way I see it is, guys, if your That's commissions crazy. are closed and people want to commission that artwork, they'll just find another artist who will do it for them. Like, that is especially true. for your. Yeah, you can always find find other artists or like other people to commission. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that do VTuber stuff. For character here stuff, I find yeah. like most artists are pretty chill with your character here because they're usually referencing memes. I don't know if you guys remember, but a long time ago. Uh, yeah, referencing memes is also another thing. Uh, there was actually some drama with Fortnite in sort of a similar vein where, um, you know that like default Fortnite dance? Yeah. Like that yeah. Fortnite dance is a one, like is a almost like beat for beat of um, a dance that Donald Faison does in Scrubs. Turks so the show's dance. Turks dance, yes. But yeah, Fortnite, they also- They haven't seen the movie, so I don't really, I, I, I didn't really know about this. Uh, didn't they also do the Carlton dance? They did. Yeah. So there was a time where they were taking dances from popular media. Yeah. With zero credit, like not calling them the Carlton dancers, calling it something else. No credit, and then just like putting it in the game. Yep. And if you're a big- Damn, I didn't know about this at all. Yeah, it feels so trippy to find it. Uh... To find out about this like this fan of uh fortnite currently you'll know that most of the item shop is references to tiktok dances yep, yep. right oh no i mean riot's been doing it a lot longer than that with league yeah. of legends yeah. a lot of the dances have been from popular media since the dawn of the game yep yeah well i, I remember that donald Faison and a lot of these actors they were right because they were like we did that like that's our thing and there was no credit given to me that had a bit more weight to it than this does yeah at least with that like they invented that dance it then became a meme and they referenced the meme whereas this is like they didn't create the original meme but they're doing a art of it and saying yeah. that it's still theirs because they're doing art i mean there's no meme in the middle though 
with the stealing of the design. Or, like it just doesn't. That that's it not doesn't make sense. That yeah, yeah, that's not. I feel like if yeah. you have enough time to complain about it on Twitter, you have enough time to work on your art commissions. So focus on your art commissions. There's no. There's enough money to go around. Like again, this stuff happens yeah. all the time. It's goofy goober behaviors. It really is. Yes. 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 Anyway, let's look at the comments. That was the pretty decent video. Just to clarify something, I've seen a lot of people not to mention to store OC designs wasn't what Umi got cancelled for. Hmm. It was the main thing that they were called being out. Wait, what? Yes, that was the main thing that they were being called out for, but they eventually got them cancelled slash run away from tracing someone else's art to pass of their own. Yeah, it's kind of whack. I saw this VTuber initial debut tweet with this reference sheet. I immediately got suspicious just from the fact that he didn't mention uh, artist credits uh, anywhere. You Red Falcon, usually you're right on the money. Um, being around the OC scene for over a decade, that's spoiling some. Yeah. Not missing out on anything when it comes to social media. Yeah, true. Loban small bark emanated from Underhill. I used to get Twitter DMs from scam bots claiming to make VTuber models and such. I wasn't even a VTuber though. Yeah, I don't, I don't really get bots uh, messaging me, although I got like some. Anyway, thank you for watching this reaction and until next time, see ya later. Yo, what up boys, welcome to React Andy Friday, where we go over and react to some videos over on my... Yo, what up boys? Yo, what up boys? And welcome to... Yo, what up boys? And welcome to another React Andy Friday, where we go over and react to some videos live on my Twitch. Today we are gonna react to some daily dose of the internet. Hello everyone, this is your daily dose of internet. Bruh, she <laughs> lost it. Hey, what the dog doing? I know, go away. There's an the alligator. Then base the dog, scared the alligator away. So apparently this is a test to see how smart your cat is. If she puts her hands against the wall, she's got a high IQ. If she's... <laughs> Okay. I've already seen this before. <laughs> Audrey, Bruh. I don't want to scare you. Hello, I don't want to scare you. This poor robot collapsed <laughs> after working for I over 20 hours you. straight with no breaks. Yeah, the word is really being automatized. Or is it, is it the correct word? Oh, he fell off. This crazy customer oh, man, started hissing guy. at the waiter. What is this woman doing? This chunky monster of a boy. He's not like he's not overeating. I know that. Look at <laughs> this little guy's human instincts kicked in. It's okay. <laughs> Imagine being fooled by a drawing of a fish. They was to eat the fish. What a cute boy. Was he measuring? <laughs> it's very important that she gets the her fuck? purported injection. But. Yeah, what a prank. <laughs> 
This poor guy was just trying to help out these ducklings. <laughs> but he was just helping. I want to sleep. Mm. I want to sleep. That is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Sorry, Later. Over. Hello everyone, this is your daily dose of internet. This hot air balloon in Australia malfunctioned, causing it to rapidly drop in altitude. After hitting a building, it eventually landed in a tree. Oh, I got smag. A police officer walked in right when a robbery was happening. The suspect obviously was caught and was sent to jail. Yeah, I deserved. Deserved the jail time. Oh, a raccoon. He's gonna hit into someone's floor. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I just it. found out that Let's bears go. can get the zoomies. I knew that that the arrow was aiming on her forehead. <laughs> was doing a Fortnite dance. Yeah, cats looking. Yeah, cats check. I guess robots Bruh. are starting to take over jobs in the cosmetic industry. My robots are gonna take over everything in the entire world. I can already see it. I have to go to work. I'm really sorry. Please don't oh, this me boy like so this. <laughs> He's so cute. I Such love a cute you so gamer. much. I'll be back and we'll go on a long walk, okay? Please stop it. Bro. There's a national park in Texas where you can see dinosaur tracks on the ground that are millions of years old. This ancient riverbed dried that up after a drought, revealing all the footprints underneath. Oh wow. Marks. Yeah, it seems so unreal. Pretty good size. Theropod. Oh damn. Moose aren't exactly elegant creatures. Bruh. I can't tell Next. if he's having fun. I should probably stop saying bro, it's getting annoying. Or doesn't understand how a conveyor belt works. <laughs> and here, at least he got out safely. He yeah, can still run a lot. So he's swimming back there again. Oh, what an excited little boy. Oh. This guy really found the perfect skipping rack. Oh damn, son. Wow. That is it's the end of this dope. video. I really hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys again very Hello everyone, this is your daily dose of internet. This guy was just released from prison, but his family asked some police officers to pretend that he was getting arrested again. Yes, my guy. Hello. How you doing? Damn with a prank. No, 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 no. This dog refuses yeah, to get their nails cut. No, don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> this poor kid thought it was the end of the world during the solar eclipse. <laughs> what are you crying about? <laughs> it looks like a Tiny cats uh, a are so cute, from Brazil. small cats are the best. No, show me your massive cat. This is my cat. This is Henry. Say hi. I can't believe his mom boy. did this to her baby. Oh, what are you doing? Look, oh. 
this old dog was excited to try out his new staircase. Bruh. When I just said I'm gonna stop saying bruh. Because I'm a bad mom. No, you're not. You, you are a good mom. Say it. I'm a good mom. This is called the Cave of Death it's in Costa Rica. Kiddo. The cave is filled with carbon dioxide, so as soon as fire goes inside, it is immediately extinguished. No! Damn, son. Yep. Very dope. No, Bella was going under him. <laughs> Man, what are they doing? What the dog doing? There were some very strong winds in Wyoming a few days ago. Oh shit. It's gonna pop. Oh, damn, Sonny kind of handled that. He handled it like a boss. What's up with this bird? Oh, he's the airbender. He's an airbender. That is the end of this video. Hopefully this video made your day just a little better. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later. Okay, this is the last one that we are going to react to. Hello everyone, this is your daily dose of internet. I think this might be the worst proposal ever. This guy pretended to be dead in a motorcycle accident before surprising his girlfriend. What the fuck? Look at this, whack. bro. New Ray Bans dropped. You know what I'm saying? And they got the camera in it too. Listen, bro. We in that good. <laughs> what the frick? <laughs> oh my god. What the dog doing? <laughs> if this happened to me, I don't think I would ever drive again. Oh, there's, a blind person. Mm -hmm. there's no way I just got that on video. Oh my god. <laughs> this has to be the worst place to set up a dartboard. Oh, he broke the entire freaking glass, <laughs> the entire window. What are you doing? <laughs> this horse knows how to crack their own neck. Good ones. Other side. Ooh. Oh, damn. Good ones. Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Over here, over here. Right here, bro. Oh, here, bro. One of my subscribers sent me a video of their super flexible arms. Jesus. Ah. <laughs> what the frick? This person knows how to draw what? a map of the world by memory in one minute. Damn, such a good skill. Yeah, seems pretty accurate. Wow. I guess this is how you make a giant Pringle. Nope. <laughs> the horse. You like, One of my subscribers pretties. lives in Tanzania and recorded this amazing time lapse. That is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Later. Like it is the end of React, Andy. Thank you for watching the whole thing. And until next time, see ya later.